Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome to The Vine, the online campus of the Riceville United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor David Haley, one of the associate pastors, and I'm so excited to welcome you on this very special Sunday. Uh, this Sunday, October 1st, is World Communion Sunday uh, for Christians all over the world. Uh, we have uh, a lot of special things going on in our church on Sunday with special music. We have a special display uh, up here on the platform for World Communion Sunday. But as always, our goal for you for this service is that God will speak to your heart, that God will encourage you, that God will inspire you, that God will draw you closer to Himself through this worship service today. So let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you now to join with me in your hearts as I lead us in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise. On this World Communion Sunday, we're reminded that you made us all in your image, all with different gifts, but the same Spirit. In all parts of the earth, we have come to know you in different ways, but we are united in your love for us demonstrated in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior. In these symbols of the cup and of the bread in communion, these simple gifts of nourishment, we recognize that we are one. As we share these gifts from you, in humility we show our gratitude for your creation, and we share together our common humanity and our common hope that is found in you, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Church, my name is Eun Soo Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors here. It is my great joy to lead us in prayer today. As today is World Communion Sunday, after morning prayer, I will be leading the Lord's Prayer in my native language, Korean. So please join me in your own native language. Now, let us pray together. Holy God, on this World Communion Sunday, we come before you with gratitude, gathering around your holy table everywhere and in every place. As we worship you, pour your grace upon us and fill our hearts with your presence. Lord, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. May we see in each other your light, your love, and you. Let our differences, names, languages, and appearances not divide us. Instead, may what truly matter today and every day be that we are one in you. May you shine your light into those whose world is covered in darkness. May you use us to feed the hungry, clothe the ones who need clothes, give a cup of water to those who are thirsty, and share with others as you have shared with us. Loving God, we offer you both our joys and concerns, so often intermingled in our lives. We especially pray for these whom we now name with our voices or in our heart. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Help us to remember that you hold each one of us gently and lovingly, offering your healing mercies. Give us courage to be your witnesses, seeking peace in this world. We humbly offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. 하늘에 계신 우리 아버지여, 이름이 거룩히 여김을 받으시오며, 나라가 임하시오며 뜻이 하늘에서 이루어진 것 같이 땅에서도 이루어지이다. 오늘 우리에게 일용할 양식을 주시옵고 우리가 우리에게 죄 지은 자를 사하여 준것 같이 우리 죄를 사하여 주옵시고 우리를 시험에 들게 하지 마옵시고 다만 악에서 구하옵소서 대개 나라와 권세와 영광의 아버지께 영원히 있사옵나이다. 아멘. Let us now take time to offer our hearts and gifts. I'd like to remind you that you can give to the ministry of Ricefield United Methodist Church through our website, smartphone apps, and mail. Let us continue to worship our God. I'm Pastor Eun Soo. I'm so happy to have this time with y'all. So today, I want to give this question. Has anyone here traveled to another country? Or do you have a country um, you want to go to? Well, actually, I was not born in the United States. I was born and grew up in another country, South Korea. And then I moved in the United States four years ago to meet all of you. Today is a very special day in churches all around the world. It's called World Communion Sunday. Have any one of you heard about this before? No? Yes? Okay, let us imagine this one. 
Picture a big and long table filled with all kinds of bread. A white bread or baguette or nine or to wheat, just kind of things. And now imagine people from all different countries with different languages and different clothes and different um, cultures. And they are sitting around the table and sharing the bread. That is what we celebrate today. In church, when we eat bread and drink grape juice or wine, it reminds us of meal Jesus had with his friends. He told them the bread was like his body and the grape juice or wine was like his blood, which he gave for us because he loves us so much. It's called Holy Communion. So when we all eat the bread and drink the juice, no matter where we are in the world, it's like we are all having a big family meal together. And it reminds us God loves everyone and everywhere. So today, as people all over the world celebrate communion, we remember we are all connected in God's love. And every time you take communion, think of the big and worldwide family you are a part of. So Bill of Ricefield kids, remember we are loved and we are all connected in Christ and in Christ's love. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us this big family. And thank you so much for giving us your love. Help us to remember your love and big family in worldwide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Hear the word of the Lord. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our midst that our hearts might be prepared to hear your word. May your anointing be upon the one who preaches that his sins might not hinder your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Well, as we've already mentioned a couple of times, uh, this Sunday, the first Sunday of October, in the Christian year is called World Communion Sunday. It's a day in which through Holy Communion we celebrate our unity and oneness with brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. So today we're thinking about Holy Communion. We're thinking about the Lord's Supper. Years ago, when one of my granddaughters was young, she came forward for communion one Sunday. She took a piece of bread, but uh, when she was offered the cup to dip the bread into, she declined and she looked at her mom and said, I don't really like to drink blood. So nothing like a child to be very literal, right? And then there's the story about the four-year-old who was in church when the juice and communion bread were being given out. And he was very interested in this. He wanted to come forward and uh, receive communion, but his mother told him she didn't think he was quite ready yet. And then later, when the collection plate came by, even though he had an offering in his hand, he ignored the collection plate. 
His mom tried to get him to put the offering in. And finally, he said in a loud voice, if I can't eat, then I'm not paying. Yeah, you never know what kids are going to say, do you? <laughs> but World Communion Sunday is actually about much more than celebrating our unity through Holy Communion. It's a celebration of unity and service. It's always about much more than realizing that through communion we're connected with fellow Christians worldwide. Now that's important. But World Communion Sunday also emphasizes that our Christian faith is never solely personal or even focus solely on the local community. The Christian faith begins at a personal level. When you make your commitment to acknowledge Jesus as your Savior and commit to be His disciple or His follower, uh, it begins at a personal level. But then your Christian faith immediately focuses on the community around you because we have a responsibility to minister to human need and share the good news of the gospel in our daily lives. But it doesn't stop there. There's also a global element to being a Christian. And it's found very clearly in the scripture that I just read from Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Jesus commands His followers to take the gospel into all the world and make disciples. Why? Because God so loved the world. Did you know that our church, Wrightsville United Methodist Church, takes this command seriously? We absolutely do. Have you ever heard of the Hatfield Archer Memorial Hospital? It's in the community of Rotofunk in Sierra Leone, West Africa. It's in one of the poorest areas in West Africa. Sierra Leone as a nation has a grand total of about 100 doctors in the entire country. The under five mortality in Sierra Leone is 15%. That means out of, of every 100 children that survive being born, 15 will die before they reach the age of five. The average life expectancy in Sierra Leone is between 40 and 50 years. Now, it's a world away from the greater Wilmington area where we live and worship. And yet our church has been instrumental in reestablishing the hospital in 2014 after it had been closed and damaged during the Sierra Leone Civil War in the 1990s. An organization, in fact, was birthed out of our church 10 years ago to work with a medical group in Norway to provide support for the hospital. And it's called Mission of Hope Rotofunk. Mission of Hope Rotofunk and Wrightsville United Methodist Church raise more than $100,000 annually to pay staff salaries to support programs such as the Madonna Project and Let Girls Be Girls and to respond to special needs. The Madonna Project is a program providing prenatal care and hospital delivery and follow-up care for expectant mothers. This area around Rotofunk used to have one of the highest rates of newborn and maternal deaths. Now it has one of the lowest rates. In fact, the hospital only lost one baby and one mother in the first eight months of this year while uh, having dozens and dozens of successful deliveries. It cost about $100 to support an expectant mother in the Madonna Project. The Let Girls Be Girls program targets teenage girls to encourage them to stay in school and avoid pregnancy. Every week, the hospital engages in a mobile outreach clinic to villages in the area to test for and treat malaria in young children and in expectant mothers. On average, at least half of the children under the age of five will test positive 
for malaria. Wrightsville United Methodist Church typically sends one or two mission teams every year to spend a week at Rotofunk and see the work firsthand and meet the staff and help in the mobile outreach. And we need volunteers for these teams. Now, not everyone can go. Not everyone is called to go. But is God calling you to go? And we also need financial support for Mission of Hope Rotofunk to be able to continue to support the work of this wonderful hospital. We have a program at church that's uh, actually starting this first Sunday of October. It's called Change for a Change. And there'll be buckets in the Sunday school hallways to collect change to support our hospital in Rotofunk. And above all, we need your prayers for our work in Rotofunk in Sierra Leone, West Africa. We are so blessed to be a great commission church through our connection with the Hatfield Archer Memorial Hospital in Rotofunk in Sierra Leone, West Africa. This year, we've also been directly involved through mission teams with God's work in El Salvador and Sri Lanka as well. In El Salvador, our high school students helped with construction of a school and delivered food parcels to individuals and families in need. Uh, this past April, the uh, intergenerational and ecumenical team that we sent to El Salvador painted a church and delivered food parcels and helped in other ways. Last January, we had a small mission team go to Sri Lanka where we assisted with mobile medical clinics and feeding programs for poor children. We had a team of two go to Rotofunk last spring. You see, you are a part of and connected to a church that takes seriously World Communion Sunday, that lives into the full meaning of World Communion Sunday, not just one Sunday a year, but month after month, saving lives, responding to human need, and sharing God's love and the message of the gospel in our local community and also in far away places across the world. Wrightsville United Methodist Church is truly a Great Commission Church. In a few moments, we'll have the opportunity to receive communion on this World Communion Sunday, which actually uh, began the night before because of uh, time zones. As we were going to bed, Pacific Island Christians were sharing the bread and the wine. And then churches in China met in secret so they would not be arrested. Christians in the Middle East met under the watchful eye of the government as they celebrated Holy Communion. And just hours ago in Europe, Christians gathered in churches that used to be much fuller and celebrated the Lord's Supper. In Africa, the sacrament was celebrated by a growing number of Christians, many of whom bear scars of persecution as they commune together. Today, we join with them all. As you receive communion, if, if you've made a commitment of your life to believe in Jesus, I encourage you to pray about three things. Number one, thank God for the gift of God's love through Jesus that has touched your life. Number two, ask God to help you to be a witness and to help people in need in our community. And number three, ask God to help you know how to live into the full meaning of World Communion Sunday. Ask God to show you how you can support Mission of Hope Rotofunk and uh, perhaps even go there with a mission team or, or go on one of our mission teams to El Salvador or to another country or to help others go if you're not able to go. And if you haven't made a commitment of your life to believe in Jesus, I encourage you to prayerfully consider making that commitment. Jesus died on the cross for you in order that you can be forgiven for your sins. The Bible is clear. 
that God so loved the world. In fact, that God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son. Jesus calls us to acknowledge that in Holy Communion and in service, in our connection to the whole world. And not just to acknowledge it, but to actually do something and to put our faith into action. Jesus calls us to live into His mission, the mission to take the gospel message of God's love in Jesus Christ to the whole world with words and with actions. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you want to receive Holy Communion in just a moment, uh, make sure that you have bread and a cup of juice or other common liquid available for your personal communion. God bless you. Our service will continue with Holy Communion. And so we invite you to get a piece of bread and some liquid so that you might consume the elements uh, with us. And so if you don't have those, why don't you hit pause on the video. Go ahead and get those things together and come back and join us. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, praying together. Merciful, Merciful God, we confess, confess that, that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to continue to pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the, In the name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ you, you are, are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks and, and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for us. This is the blood of Christ, shed for us. You're invited now to consume the elements that you have in your home. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world. That message is at the heart of World Communion Sunday. Let us now go forth to love and serve God in all that we do, living into the full meaning of World Communion Sunday. And as we go forth, may God's blessing go with us, the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.